Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So in this video, I'm just changing the TPMS valves in all my wheels on the Model S here. So I recently got the alloys refurbished and when they were back, I put new uh, Michelin Cross Climate All Season tyres on, used the existing TPMS valves which were on the wheels and then the car um, had a 12 volt and then traction battery uh, problems so it went off to the Tesla service centre and ended up being there for a month while the uh, traction battery under there got replaced. It's now been back two weeks and I've got um, a couple of problems on the TPMS uh, valves so I keep getting errors up on the dash um, intermittently that um, there's no communication with well it turns out I think one of the valves that front one on that side by the looks of it and two tires are losing a bit of pressure and certainly over the month it sat in at the Tesla, Tesla service center the, um, two tires lost 10 psi so what I'm doing today is um, replacing all the sensors um, which is a right pain because obviously I've only just done this job and rebalanced all the wheels, put new weights on um, and uh, it's a shame with brand new alloys I've got to go and do that all again and take the weights off and take the glue off so it's a bit of a pain when it's only just been done but I just thought let's do it right, replace all the sensors because I don't know how old these sensors are and uh, what I'm actually doing is replacing them with Autel programmable sensors. So in this video I'll just show you um, what these are. Uh, it just might be useful for people that don't understand how the tyre pressure system works um, within these valves. So I've done that front wheel already, just starting the back wheel and I thought hey, why not make a video of this because some people might find this interesting because the tyre pressure monitoring system is something that people just don't normally get to see. So here's the uh, wheel up on the tyre removing machine and then we've got the sensor there that sits inside the tyre which measures the pressure of that air inside the tyre and it's sending out a signal which the car picks up. So this is one of the new ones I fitted, they're a very small lightweight sensor. This and this are two of the original ones that I've removed. So let's have a look at these. Um, so what I found, I did reuse these initially of course, but uh, what I found is they're all different makes which uh, it's not surprising because they do get changed over the years and this car is seven and a half years old so generally the batteries in these they're just a coin battery you know your standard sort of lithium battery that you'd have on a computer motherboard or in your car keys but they're sealed you can't change them um, so when that battery goes flat which is typically about five six years old then you have to change the sensor um, so yeah, it's not surprising this car has got um, different sensors on because the batteries would have gone flat at some point being a seven and a half year old car. But what I found when I took these um, tyres off originally is they were fitted wrong. So what you have is this little washer here and then obviously this nut clamps down onto that washer and that washer just sort of stops the nut screwing down on your alloy wheel. And then the actual seal is done here. That rubber seal there is what is making the seal. So as that pushes up through the hole in the alloy, that makes the seal and then the nut clamps it all down. But what I'd found with this, well with these, is whoever had fitted these, which to be honest, has to be a tire place because they're the only places that would have the equipment, um, it just fitted them all wrong, so they hadn't realised what these washers were for. So two of the valves were missing the washer, and the other two, as you'll probably see there, that mark there, they, the washer was just sat stuck on the back, which is a sort of rubberized um, soft plastic on the back of the sensor, was stuck there on the back of the sensor on two of the valves. So either this washer was just um, spinning around loose inside the wheel and it naturally just sort of found its place there and stuck or 
I find it hard that someone would have just got hold of that and pushed it into that and then fitted that in a wheel but anyway that's what they were like so when I got the wheels refurbished obviously I fitted these properly two were missing washers so I made up some washers um, couldn't I don't have any of these aluminium washers you can buy service kits but these uh, I didn't have any service kits to mat to suit these ones so I made up some washers but consequently as I said two have slowly started leaking um, which could be because I hadn't done them up tight enough um, but one is playing up so I thought well rather than um, repair these because I don't know how long the batteries how old the batteries are in these let's just replace them all with new valves so the new valves I bought are Autel ones and these are programmable and I've got an Autel scanner that can do this job so uh, it just makes sense to buy the Autel valves so what you get in these let's just open up the packet so what you get with these is you get the sensor that goes inside the wheel there inside the tire you get the valve stem and in this case I've got rubber ones uh, I prefer the rubber ones they just don't crow they make a nice seal um, the metal ones which uh, this is obviously a metal one on the originals they just tend to get messy uh, you know they corrode um, don't clean up particularly well um, and uh, the advantage is obviously if you had your wheels refurbished you can unscrew those and reuse them whereas um, you have to damage these to get them out so you have to buy a new rubber valve um, but you know they're not too expensive you, you can buy these separately so uh, I've gone with rubber this time just because generally they make a better seal um, they're absolutely obviously all valves are rubber normally until TPMS came along and people started switching to um, aluminium stems but uh, the general feeling is we're going back to rubber anyway because it's uh, superior so yeah you get that and then you have a little screw there which screws the two together and then you can see there's a little hole in the side and that's actually your valve so when you put air in it just goes through here and out those holes on either side and the sensor is just screwed to the bottom sensing the pressure within the tire and then uh, I've got my scanner here and I went round and um, looked at all the sensors and what you get with the sensor is you get an ID code which is a hexadecimal number and then it gives you the tire pressure we can see that one was 0, 0.0 because that was a tire that I had already taken off when I triggered all the sensors you get the frequency 433 um, megahertz you then get the pressure sorry temperature I mean in Fahrenheit and then you get a status of the battery in this case okay so what I've done is gone round all the wheels and read the sensors and then in turn I had then programmed the new sensor to match the same ID and the frequency in each on each wheel in turn so then this is a complete replication of that so then when I start driving the car just doesn't see any uh, difference it sees that as the same as the sensor that was fitted so these Autel sensors are also quite a lot smaller than these ones that were fitted you can see there they're only two-thirds the size also much lighter um, but obviously when your wheel is spinning you really want a lighter sensor here um, but obviously your uh, wheel balancing um, and the weights you're going to have on the wheel are going to counteract that but the less weight you can have the better so um, yeah I'm changing all of them obviously this one I'm in the middle of doing it the tires off down there um, putting the new valve pull the rubber valve stem through first and then you screw this sensor up to the valve stem there's a little um, torque screw there that's got a bit of Loctite on the end as well you do that up to four Newton meters so that sensor is just hanging on the end of the rubber valve and then uh, tires back on rebalance the wheels which is a pain because these I know this is dirty this wheel because it is very mucky outside at the moment but yeah I'm gonna to have to take all these weights off remove the glue which is a right pain and start again 
um, because it's very very difficult to do this without taking the tire off you can sort of um, particularly with this machine you can push the tire down but because these are screwing ones you've got to get a screwdriver or a torx bit on a ratchet in there to do that up um, and it's very difficult to have enough access um, and it's quite easy for the tire to shift so it's just easier take the tire off completely start again start again with the rebalancing so it's a shame I've had to do this after only two weeks I wish I'd have done this in the first place but anyway there we go so because I have programmed these new sensors to replicate or clone the originals the car doesn't need reprogramming it's not going to see any difference and what happens is obviously as soon as you start driving these send the tire pressures of each tire uh, the car won't say any different but if you're changing the sensor to a different ID because there might be a case where you go to a car and the battery is dead and you can't read what was there then you're going to start with a new ID number you can obviously go through a relearn process in this case the, the scanner here tells us what the process is for the car that we're working on um, will not talk 182 god that's high I thought I'm, it should be 175 on the Tesla but anyway still very high um, but yeah it tells you here what the relearn process is uh, on most cars you just drive them for a few miles and it, the car automatically relearns um, but in this case I don't need to uh, go through that because the car's not going to see any difference because I've cloned the original sensors so I hope you found that little lesson on tyre sensors useful. If you have, please do click that thumbs up button on YouTube. That really does help other people find this video and find the channel. Do subscribe if you haven't done already. I'm posting EV videos at least every week. Um, and if you've got any comments or questions, put them in the um, comments below. I'll answer all questions, um, whether on tyre sensors or... Um, on this car, if you want to ask anything about this car, this is a 2014 Model S, seven and a half years old, and it's done 101,000 miles. Thank you for watching the video. This channel gets small viewing numbers, so to get the video noticed in people's feeds, YouTube favours videos with what they term engagement, and that basically means comments. So please do comment on the video, do ask me questions, tell me what you want to see next, also hit the little thumbs up button if you found the video useful or you liked it. Do subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button and then press the bell to be notified when new videos get uploaded. Also have a look at the back catalogue of videos. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of videos on the channel already. And also use the search function to find videos that you might find interesting. Thank you very much.